Can you please join me? Move your caps. Follow me with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. <laughs> Item three. Public comments, three minute limit. Anybody would like to speak or ask a question? Uh, Mr. Dino here from Vandale Street. I have questions about my last meeting. Excuse me, Vandale Street, we need a number. Oh, 85. 85 okay. Vandale Street. Very proud of that address. Right. Looks right down on Murphy Park. I, I see know a lot of things selling in Murphy Park. So state your address. plenty of things to report about that. Mary, uh, in our last meeting here, all of the questions that I had, they will be met, uh, addressed by the Ethics Commission. Is that correct? I had like who received it, how did it get there, who was it handed to, things of that nature. That is out of my hands. That belongs to them. I think I think it's through him. We have to do oh, it. I'm sorry. I was always uh, sorry, addressing it to uh, the town administrator. Uh, is that correspondence or is that a question? That is a question. I will be addressing the uh, ethics commission on Thursday uh, concerning the matter that I brought here. My last meeting. The unresponded to complaint of Mr. St. Gonge. So that was 2013 complaint? That was a complaint that occurred on the 13th and was filed on December 9th, 2014. Okay. So my question is all of the questions that I addressed last week that will be addressed by the Ethics Commission? I think they will be. You think they will be? And who will I be meeting at the, uh, that meeting? Do you know who the, the members Ethics are? Ethics Commission, yes. Who are they? The chairman is. This is Nash, I believe. No. no. Um, Help me out here, Mary, who the chairman is. Bill Pearsall. William Pearsall, he's also the president of the Historical Society. Okay. He's on that. And this is Nash, is on that. Okay. Ed Perrin. Eddie Perrin. Perrin. Lamoureux. Mm -hmm. Yep, on the Lamoureux. So, so Sean Doyle. And Sean Doyle. Doyle. And, and they have retained counsel, is that correct? And uh, additional and separate counsel for that? I thought that mm -hmm. something else. There was, is somebody that they have. Yeah, everyone looks by and confused with you. Thank you, Omar. And she's got morals, that's why. Oh, yeah. Well, she does have morals <laughs> and she pays attention as well. And who is that counsel? Um, I, it's you somebody know? that Mary's worked with. I don't know if anybody's already been used by them. All right, uh, and I would like audio tapes of the previous um, meetings so that I may listen to them. Uh, is there are audio tapes of uh, previous uh, Ethics Commission meetings. There was one last month, and one on the 20th, and there was one in uh, September and one in October. Yes. Yes, so I, I, I would like audio tapes of those meetings to be sent to me so I may listen to them. Got to cover all the bases around here and tell it two or three times to get it through. Now, Mary, you told me that some of my FOIs had, had been complete. Which ones were those? Because you didn't send me an email. Not quite. I spoke to you on the phone yes, on you Friday. Did. Right. And I addressed you on Friday that it's the Wheelerator and the um, Ethics Commission um, information that you requested. Okay. And you said that you were going to be coming today to pick yeah. them up, but you did not. I did not. Come. That's correct. In the, in the future, I'll probably remind you to have you send me an email if we uh, correspond by telephone. Ten seconds. That's fine. I, I believe I address most of my questions. I thank you very much and see you at the closing. Okay. Anybody else would like to speak or ask a question? Here you have John. <coughs> no, just oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I did that once in an auction. I'm just keeping <laughs> uh, Okay, item four, approval of minutes. Special October 11, 2007, <coughs> Board of Finance and Selecting Committee. Move we approve and submit them. Second. Motion made by Scott, second by Roy. <coughs> Any additions, corrections, deletions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. If they oppose, are there any abstentions? Okay, so we'll October 16, 2017, Board of Selectmen minutes. So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Simmons, second by Ms. Mori. Additions, corrections, deletions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? I <laughs> have it. Petitions of communications. Mary and Denise, did we receive any? Yeah. Denise? No, sir. Okay. Report of Standing Committee, General Government Committee. Alma? There's nothing on the agenda. Mary's been working on the personnel um, policy manual, and she's now working um, with the library board because they have one also, so she's working to coordinate them both. So probably in December we'll be meeting. Uh, 
Okay, item seven. Item seven is special service district reports, not a reporting month. 7B, public facilities study group, might be executive session. Skip me to 8A, B, and C. It's a non reporting month. Just all to, three. Just Mary. As a, um, footnote on the fire marshal when you did receive a fire marshal report from Norm Perrin um, today. Uh, just note that in the future, that'll you'll have one combined report that you'll get on the second um, agenda of every month. Um, so they're, they're coordinating that. <clears throat> okay, thanks, Mary. Town Administrator's report. You all received that in your package. Does anybody have any questions for Mary? Yeah, I got, I got a collection. Oh, okay. Mary. Um, paragraph four, the financing for the high school project. Yes. Um, down towards the end, you said that the, the credit rating will likely be A plus or AA rating. Yes. What's the highest? Triple A. Thank you. You're welcome. So you had a question? Okay. Any of you else have any questions for Mary? <coughs> Getting off easy, Mary. With Douglas here, he got peppered. <laughs> Okay, unfinished business, 10A, Cargo Falls, that's a possible executive session. Ross and Materials, that's a possible executive session. 11, grant consideration and updates. <coughs> the budget for the state has just been settled and we had some problems with a renter's tenant, was it renter's agreement? Renter's rebate program. Right. Um, it's a program that the state um, has actually operated at OPM. <coughs> the only participation that the towns have had is we've received the um, applications and we've submitted the applications from the local renters to the state. Um, and then the state would then um, send the money directly, whatever rebate they was, the renter was supposed to get received, they would, res they would send it out directly to the renter. Um, in the budget as it was passed, um, there's some um, discord between how that, that program and the elderly circuit breakup program. Um, they did not fund the elderly circuit breakup program, but according to state their own state law, um, they can defund the elderly circuit breaker program except for distressed municipalities, which Putnam is a distressed municipality. The um, renter's rebate program, they say in the legislation that the entire program will be the responsibility of the municipalities to pay for. They did fund $12.5 million, but they're saying that they don't have any mechanism to distribute that to the municipalities. So um, I've spent a good amount of time between legislators and um, CCM um, who's been advocating and cost who's been advocating for the towns. Um, their latest information that we got was when they go into special session to work out the language on the hospital tax. They're going to work out this component as well. Cost and CCM are both advocating that since the application period for this program closed October 1st, um, they're advocating that the municipality that the state maintains the program for the current budget year and if they want to move it or discuss it for the next budget year fine but um for putnam the cost for the renters rebate program would be about one hundred and twenty five thousand um, dollars so it's undetermined yet where that's all going to land either way it's a program that has to be funded whether it's funded by as an unfunded mandate by the state to the local municipalities and we bear the burden of it or whether the state um, <coughs> maintains their responsibility. So they have $12 million sitting in this, but they just don't know how to get it out to us? The $12 million that's sitting there, it's, um, it's, debate, it's being debated right now as to whether or not that $12 million was really supposed to be funding the elderly circuit breaker, distressed municipalities, which is what they're not allowed to cut off mm -hmm. because they zeroed out elderly circuit breaker. Okay. So they think that it's actually on the wrong line. However, um, there's also discussion that that 12.5 million represents 50% of the renters rebate program. So the towns would only be on the hook for 50% and the state would reimburse the town the other 50%. Everybody's trying to read through all this language OPM is saying that because of the language under the renter's rebate program that it says the full burden is the municipality, then 
that locks that 12 and a half million from being able to be distributed. Mm -hmm. So there, it's all legislative language at this point. Now, on the elderly circuit breaker program, you said because we're a distressed community, we're going to get that money? By law, on, on their legislation, we're supposed to be able to get that. However, how, they how have no is, funding in there. How much is that? About 53000 53, okay. Did you hear Mary's last statement? Yeah. There's no money. Yeah, no money. Yeah. So we're supposed to get 53. But there's, and, no, but there's no, no money in the checkbook. I don't know how that's going to happen. Well, it's not that they can how many, get 12 million. Do we know how many, how many people in Putnam are, are, are on the, that program? Um, no, I do not have uh, uh, family counts on that. Um, Does the I state? Just, I'm sorry? Does the state? Um, I could get that. I just haven't asked for um, our person that's been populating all of these applications to give me that number. I just got the dollar figure. An average, an uh, average household, an average, um, it's usually around 900 to $1,200 for a renter's rebate check. <coughs> Okay, when, so, when is that money supposed to be distributed? To supposed them? to start this month. They were they were actually supposed to have started distributing it. It's supposed to be October and April. So, so basically the state's telling us, even though we've gone through about four or five months of our fiscal year budget, suck it up, buttercup, and pay up? <coughs> this was something that not pretty much uh, flew completely <coughs> under the radar. It was in the implementer bill. So it was in the bill that they got. It wasn't even part of the original budget. Um, bill discussion. Um, so it was part of the implementer bill, which was about 700 some odd pages long. Um, Is this paid out annually, Mary? Every year, yeah. The calendar year or fiscal year? Um, it goes, I believe it goes by the state fiscal year. The, we've never paid it out before. Let me I just, understand okay. that. My concern is one, it'd be nice to know how many families that affects at Putnam, and two, sure. how we're going to figure out coming up with the money. Because if the state says pay, we have to pay, correct? There would be an argument to be made there that the municipalities had no opportunity to determine whether or not they wanted to take Mary, on that burden. they could have made that argument for the past 10 years. True. But we have... <laughs> but, um, but, but in the they meantime, are, there may be somebody that... That, that is looking... That, right. And that is something that we would have to address if how we were going to handle that funding. None of the towns have appropriated funding for a rental oh, program. I think they would. Yeah. Nobody does. Um, and because some of them are in the millions. Because it's um, not a town program. Not a town program. Again, I'm not worried. And certainly this is no reflection. It's no. just a hey, surprise, guys. Here exactly. You go. Which is why there's a lot of, there. there is a lot of movement within, I think the legislatures were really caught off guard by some of this. Um, and very quickly when, you know, we were all calling our legislatures over this past week, um, it very quickly turned around to the OPM, their OPM is probably going to take it for this current year because the application process is already completed yeah, yeah. and they've already obligated um, and then they'll revisit it for, for next year. So I think that's going to be a hot topic of debate on the upcoming budget um, cycle when they restart this whole conversation in February. But, um, We're not restarting the conversation until February, so we won't know whatever whoever's sitting no. here won't know when they're trying to nuke out a budget. What the hell to do with that? Yeah. Well, we they are going to be doing a, they're going to be calling a special um, session in about two weeks or the week after Thanksgiving to hammer out the hospital tax language because that was the one part that the governor did not sign off on was special tax uh, taxing around the hospitals. Um, so this will be on that legislative session as well for them to iron out this, these two programs. <clears throat> and I mean, using your, out. using your figures, round numbers, $125,000, $1,000 a person, right. 125, 125 families. families. Yes. Yeah. I mean, would take. So, probably somewhere in that range, yeah. depending, you know, because you Oh, I didn't know if it was capped at a thousand. I thought if it, the more needy, the more you, okay. <laughs> right. I'm just I taking it. I'm just using, you I know, round, 12, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, it would be fluctuate somewhere in that range. Yeah, we would have. Okay, moving on. Twelve. Uh, <laughs> no, you do have the authorization. Oh, uh, is an, uh, authorizing an resolution. resolution. Consider for approval resolution for the EMPG grant. Can you give us an overview of that, Mary? So this is and our. A thousand words or less. This is our emergency <laughs> management grant. It um, offsets roughly fifty percent of the emergency management directors salary thank you your motion 
So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approving this resolution? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> Pass. Okay, Mary, I go on the 12 now. Ash Landfill Fund Review. In your package, Mary has a excellent review of the landfill from its conception, I believe, and the last four years of just the last four years of where the money is, where it goes. Mm -hmm. So it says discussion. There's no vote. If anybody has a question. I, I just got one quick question. Mary, the on the on the last page for this 2017 estimated mm -hmm. says we uh we paid debt service. That that's us paying the fund back, correct? Yes. And yes, that twenty five thousand dollars is us paying interest. interest on money we borrowed from us. Yes. Why is that seven point one percent? Um that's the accumulation of Several years. All the years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so okay. there's a debt service right. schedule. Okay. All right. Okay. It makes yeah. sense now. Thank you. It should only be one percent. It that, is that, that's why yeah. I went, yeah. Wait a minute. That looks high. Right. right. It is scheduled at one percent, but it's accumulation of all the years. Right? Okay. And Very it depends good. on what was. Thank you. I appreciate this report, by the way. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions on the report? So it was a really well done report by Mary and Donna Diani. Yes. B, posting summary of the fire marshal's fee ordinance. A vote is required. So this, the ordinance, we have the ability to um, add to the town meeting call, um, which I apologize, I thought the town meeting call was printed out. Um, so you would vote it on putting, you do have it, okay. Yeah. So as part of that town meeting call, <clears throat> it allowed for the um, posting of the ordinance in a summary as opposed to having to post, publish in the newspaper the entire, mm -hmm. the entire ordinance. If we publish the entire ordinance, it's $1,100 in the town crier to publish mm -hmm. the entire ordinance. Um, this allows us to publish a summary, just a, a, a shortened summary of it with specific language by state statute and that says where the information can be found. Um, and we keep copies in the town clerk's office as well as we post it on the website and that. So that's what... Um, and how much would advertising the summary cost us? The ad will cost us $200 the most. Mary, this isn't this isn't the stuff that came through the general... Yeah, this is the fire that, marshals. That, that same thing? Yeah, the fire marshals, that's an ordinance. Fees. Yes, that's the ordinance. Just like our building permit, building um, permit is all is all done by ordinance. So this is it's a regulatory document. So it has to be put through as an ordinance. I, I don't remember this body voting on that. We did at the last yes. meeting. The last meeting, or the one before that, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of questions about it. It was at the last meeting. Yeah. It wasn't the last meeting because we decided to wait until the November twentieth. <laughs> Right. So uh, if St. Osh had any uh, changes, which uh, he has fully reviewed the ordinance um, and did not have any changes or recommendations to it. So except for posting it as a summary, as opposed to having to publish the entire. So you would be voting on adding that amendment, which Denise, if you have it there, you could read the bottom part of that amendment that allows for the summary posting. Resolved that the town of Putnam uh, in adopting the proposed ordinance establishing fire marshal inspection and permit fees is authorized to publish a summary of such ordinance in lieu of publishing the entire ordinance as authorized by section 7-157 of the Connecticut General, General Statutes. The town of Putnam town clerk will make a copy of such ordinance available for public inspection and shall upon request mail a copy of such any person requesting a copy at no charge to such person. So, so no. this is only after the ordinance has been adopted? We have um, a motion on the floor, Mary. Who second that? I'll second it. Oh, one second. So now the discussion, Mary, go. Sorry. Um, it's only after it's been adopted and it's actually adopted by town meeting. This, your vote is only um, adding that to the town credit. Okay. Can we understand that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Any more discussion? See yes. That? Yes, go. <clears throat> a quick question to follow up on the line of discussion that we had more than a month ago. My concern was that we're adding these fees, bringing in more money. The explanation was we're turning it into pay for play, kind of like we do with the building officials office. But we already have a budget. We already expend money on the fire marshal's office. So now we're going to be taking in fees. That's going to add to what we're already spending. But I think we had this discussion at the last meeting. It's the way I interpret it is okay, so let's say we take in fees. Then next year, when we sit and do the, the budget, we'll be like, okay, we have this for income, this for expenses, and ideally <clears throat> when we when we the board of finance sets the mill rate it could be a little bit less because of the fees generated from the from the fire marshal it acts as an offset it acts as an offset of their cost the revenue it's not like we're hiding the money away and yeah I, it I away. just i don't see that happening i see this town using that as additional money because we're not going to say, well, the fire marshals generated, I'll throw an, an even number out there, $50,000 this year in fees. So we're now going to not spend $50,000 that we already are. We're just gonna take that money and apply it to their budget. We're not gonna do that. What do we do, I, with, the, what do, we do with the building officials money? We take it. We take it and apply it to the budget. We take the revenue side That's, and the expense side when we're setting a budget. I would assume we do the same thing. I think so. Yeah. <clears throat> Mary, you would recognize the revenue on the revenue side. Yeah. Right. Hmm. The whole their expense is going to remain <coughs> their expense pretty much intact as their expense. <coughs> you would never net the numbers, but you would you would reflect the additional revenue on the revenue side just like we do with the building. Mm -hmm department permits that we receive right now. So in essence, you end up reducing your overall tax burden because you have additional revenue. Yeah. Any more questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? <clears throat> nice have <clears throat> Item 12C, consider the reappointment of Republican Jennifer I guess it's Benzi of 40 Liberty Highway to the Housing Authority for a term to expire October 31, 2022. So moved. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of reappointing uh, Ms. Benzi? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Ayes had it. Item 12D. Consider the reappointment of unaffiliate Rose Chattel from 140 Laconia Avenue to the Housing Authority for a term to expire October 31, 2022. So Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of reappointing Rose? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? I have it. <laughs> 12E. Consider the reappointment of unaffiliated Paul Pacora to the redevelopment agency for a term to expire this October 31, 2022, and to the Economic Development Commission for a term to expire November 29, 2022. So, so, exactly. Anybody object? Seeing no objections, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye Consider the appointment of Republican Ronald Mike Stewart for Chase, 6 Chase Road as an alternate to the Water Pollution Control Authority for a term to expire November 29, 2022. So moved. Second. Motion made, second. Discussion? Anybody opposed? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 So water. Uh, consider the appointment of unaffiliated James Northbridge, Northbridge of 115 Woodstock Avenue to the Economic Development Commission to fulfill a vacant term to expire December 1, 2020, and redevelopment agents to fulfill a vacant term to expire October 31, 2020. So moved. Second. Discussion? Any opposed? Seeing no opposition, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, G. All other business to lawfully come before this board. That's H. H, I meant. <laughs> I get my H's and G's mixed up. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, seeing there's no other business. There are some announcements. I don't know if this board was aware. You're all aware that they passed the budget, but there are some things in the budget that boards of selectors never had <clears throat> anything to do with. Example. Uh, <clears throat> deals with the Board of Education and the Board of Selectmen. You know about the increasing prevailing wage exemption. Uh, provides that <clears throat> the arbiter is not limited to choosing either the town or the union's last best offer in binding arbitration. Well, that's you, oh yeah, before it was, yeah. right. you're the union, I'm the town, you give them your best offer, town, he picks one of the other. That's it. He doesn't have to do that anymore. The arbiter can pick what he wants now. So they can they, go in the middle. Yeah. 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 So I think you're going to have more contracts going to arbitration. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. We requires any new hires or contract changes by the Board of Education to be submitted to the town's Board of Finance for review and comment. So it's not a vote, but the Board of Ed can't change the contract or hire someone without at least talking to the board of finance that's something new requires local boards of education to notify the respective municipal legislative body that'd be us before the start date of any person hired to fill a central office administration personnel position with an annual salary of a hundred thousand dollars or more so they can't hire anybody for a hundred thousand dollars without checking with this board <clears throat> Just what, like in other towns. What was the actual language, legislative body? What was that? Could you read that again? Uh, notify the respective municipal legislative body. Okay, the legislative body in the town of Putnam is town meeting. Town, town, town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not this board. That was this board. Yeah. Okay. Town no. And another one that has to go to legislative body. Purpose or approved education budget does not approve the funding. So that the, the one that Doug asked you on though, it's notify. Doesn't doesn't mean ratify. Right. So they can just say, oh, by the way, we hired Mary at or Susie at one one point two million dollars. Have a nice day. You know, it's it's not like we got to vote on it. You know what I mean? Not the town meeting. So it's gonna be interesting to see what yeah. I'll vote. How, how do you interpret around. notify? So just well, post I imagine a public you would have notice? to <laughs> at least treat it like a public hearing yeah. where you're disseminating the information to the legislative body but they don't it doesn't sound like they have to vote on it that's what i'm saying yeah. so it's like they really have to look at yeah, it. yeah. i think it's it'll shake out still anyways yeah. Yeah. Until, yeah i don't think there should be a, you know until mm -hmm. it shakes out i think there's still interpretation this is the one that most that uh, is going to really bother boards of education it allows a municipality and its Board of Education upon approval, joint approval, to enter into a cooperative agreement for administrative and central office duties. Mm -hmm. Similarly, it allows two or more Boards of Education upon a written agreement to enter into a cooperative arrangement for administrative and central office duties, just as they may already do for certain program services and activities. So in other words, if Putnam says to uh, Poffer, you got a small school system, we got a small school system. You got a superintendent, we got a superintendent. Let's give one the boot, no, we hire one. Superintendent, is that considered that? Well, what planet do you think? It's yeah. not, no. but they feel, I think they feel better by saying that. Just okay. to keep you aware. <laughs> we got all sleep in control, control now. <laughs> yes, other, Mary! One other thing that came through on that is um, arbitrators are no longer allowed to look at fund balance oh, yeah. for That's a um, means of paying contract settlements. Mm -hmm. So typically yeah. what they've looked at is the town's fund balance to determine um, yeah, capability of paying um, contract settlements or, uh, or um, future contract payments. Mm -hmm. um, in the latest legislation, they've removed that capability from arbitrators looking at the fund balance. How about yeah. Anglic numbers? I'm sorry? Anglic numbers, where they look at the, the ability of the municipality the demographics they and their do look ability at that. to play. Yes. They always look at that, but they are prohibited now from looking, taking the fund balance, balance into consideration. The actual, the actual word yeah. is, it says prohibits arbiters from considering a fund balance of 15% or less in determining a town's ability to pay under binding arbitration laws. 
by fund balance, we're talking about surplus, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Whatever is on designated. Yes. So just when keep, keep you. And this was Doug right Cutler was was here. He always used surplus. Yeah. yeah. Mary, when you showed up, I <laughs> realized that the language had changed, and you keep using fund balance. Fund yes. Balance, but you're referring to surplus. Yes. Right? Yes. Different. Same pocket. Same. Calendar. 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 Um, it's, it's just the mine itself. Okay. <laughs> so we have gave you some announcements. Item 13, public comments, 13 minute max. Does anybody agree? Three minutes. 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 and 20. So, uh, Mayor Fonzerano here, when I spoke to Mary uh, a few minutes ago, um, I mentioned to her that I her, the uh, Wheelabrator FOI uh, was complete, and in that Freedom of Information request, I'll get a hold of it here, it was basically um, to notify me of a, uh, the reconciliation itemized by calendar year since inception, including 2016, of the uh, total amount of fees that were paid and reconciled to the town of Putnam. I'm um, wondering how may this information be made public other than to a freedom of information uh, request to myself? Meaning, would it be put on the website? Would you make an announcement? Would someone write an email <laughs> to either Mary or Denise and say, hey, I'd like a copy of that information? How could that be done, or is this out of order? I don't know if it's out of order. Mm -hmm. But it's as a good possibility we could put this on the website. Okay. On a request where the person could come in and we can make them a copy. I see. So basically upon request. Sure. Is that is that is that the answer? I think that's fair. Okay, no, I just was just curious to know that. And um Mary, I have a question for you. When I saw you last, I did pose uh, the query question of Donna Diani's assistance. And you and I went about this several times. And I explained to you that I just wanted your name. Mm -hmm. You seem uh, slightly resistant, and you expressed to me that there was only certain information. I confirmed to you I understand that I wanted nothing else other than your name. And then in the end, you asked me, why do I want this information? And I responded to you that it was because it was public information. So why did you ask me why? Did you think that I was a stalker, that I had some other... Uh, just, just, just out of curious, just because I asked why, you asked why. I just. That's that's just it. I just gave you the names, just out of curiosity. That's all. Yeah, just she just wanted to know out of curiosity. Well, whenever I request any information, as long as I'm legally bound to it, it's because it's public. I understand. And no other reason. Sure. For the record, thank you very much. Have a nice night. Thank you for coming. You're, you're welcome, man. Okay. <clears throat> have no other business. Do we have to go to executive session for any of the three items? See if we don't, is there a motion? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. A motion made and second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Means adjourned. Aye.